Hey guys, back again for Talk To Me Tuesday. This is Jennifer. It is Tuesday, June 16th, 2009. Um, I thought I'd start off today by showing you um, the swap that I received in the mail yesterday. I showed you my jar last week and it was a container full of cool stuff swap, basically. Whimsy swap. So my partner was Hermione Jean and um, she sent me a great little container, which before I open it up, let me show you. This awesome box that's been painted brown which is one of my favorite colors and it's got ribbon all the way around which is really cool and then it is full it's not as pretty as it was when she sent it because I've plundered it but it's full of all kinds of crafts it had fabric inside all kinds of fabric fat quarters and samples and such it's got beads I had some little Ravenclaw earrings which I'm wearing today a button of our jar of buttons, this cool little embroidered Ravenclaw notebook that's got just a little notebook inside, so you can see it's got paper inside. And there's DMC and some tea and uh, little gel pens and scrapbooking supplies and all kinds of really cool stuff. So thank you very much, Hermione Jean. I love this. Everything in here will be put to good use. It's going to be a lot of fun going through there again and, and deciding what to do with everything. So that was my big swap. So. On to what my big plans were for today. Um, I taught a class on Saturday, a beginner's paper piecing technique class um, at Honeybee Quilt Store. It went really well. I had six very attentive students. Uh, everybody picked, figured it out. Everyone by the end of the class I think was very confident. They all did a great job, made fantastic blocks. I forgot my camera. So I meant to take my camera and take pictures um, so I could share how it went and I didn't. So you'll just have to take my word for it. They all did great. It was a wonderful class. It was a good experience for me. Um, I'm used to teaching through online tutorials. I've done some one-on-ones. I've done some demonstrations, but this was my first class with a classroom situation. So that was pretty awesome. So that was new. Um, what I, One of the things I did um, during the class was after everyone had started to finish up, I pulled out some of my own work because we were working on a, a simple block from a learning how to paper piece book. So I pulled out some of my patterns and my designs to show off a little bit just to give them an idea what you can do with paper piecing um, beyond traditionally piecing. You know, because we were working on a pineapple block and um, I had some other things like flying geese and square and square that you can do traditionally as well, but paper piecing can make it easier. You have straighter point or straighter lines, you know, more delicate points, more accurate points. Um, so what I did was pulled out my Harry Potter stuff. This is always a moment of trepidation for me because there are two reactions generally. One is, wow, that's really cool. Oh my gosh, how did you do that? The other reaction is, are you a nut job? You're, you know, you're you're an adult and you're spending obvious amounts of effort, you know, huge amounts of effort and time making Harry Potter stuff. Well, I'm not embarrassed about my Harry Potter love. I've never been embarrassed about it, but it does make other people uncomfortable. Anyway, the reaction across the board was excellent. Everyone was really interested in what I had. Even the people that didn't really know what they were looking at thought it was really neat just to see the imagery. So today I'm going to show some of my favorite Harry Potter stuff. So I actually have a completed quilt, um, which some of you that I have met have seen. And I will insert a picture right here. Now that quilt is called uh, My Magical Lens, which if I could rename it, I would, but it's too late now because I've already shown it under that name, so it's that's the name. Um, I finished it and showed it at Phoenix Rising in New Orleans, um, 2007, and then I showed it in a bookstore in um, Georgetown, Texas for the release of Deathly Hallows. It actually hung in the bookstore for about four or five weeks, and um, that was pretty cool. It's been featured on a number of sites. I'll put some links in the sidebar so you can see um, some of the places that have mentioned my magical lens. Um, these are blocks that I have done since then. They are reworks of the original patterns that are in my quilt. Many of these are um, new patterns that aren't in my quilt at all. Um, I've got both. I've since done alphabet um, I've done all of the American title fonts for Harry Potter, you know, you see those on the movie posters as well with the, you know, the lightning bolt fonts. Um, I've done uppercase and lowercase, those are all on my website, um, 
my idea there was that, you know, somebody might want to make a quilt that said Harry Potter on it, or somebody might want to make a quilt that had their kid's name on it that looked like Harry Potter letters, and I thought that would be really cool. Um, so let me show you those first. This is an almost complete set of alphabet. I say almost because I've done a couple of uh, gifts for people, so probably missing about six letters that I need to remake. Um, so as you can see, that's a lot of patterns. These are all the letters that I have right now. Here's the T that you would see in Harry Potter. Um, I mean, these are just, these are letters. They're not, you know, giantly exciting, but you get the idea. Let me see if I can find another one that is really recognizable. So here's your E for Harry Potter. Um, here's a, an uppercase letter so you can see the lightning bolt. So this is the uppercase F. I'm sorry I keep bumping the mic. It's closer to my face today so you can hear me better, but it's also kind of in my way. Here's the one you need to see. This is the H. Here's the, the P for Harry Potter. Um, some other blocks that I have these are my picture blocks that I have, and I have a stack this big. These are all five inch blocks. I have enough, no doubt, for an entire quilt. I probably will make a quilt at some point out of all of these guys, but not yet. I'm not quite ready yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some of my favorites. This is These are uh, Voldemort's eyes. You can see the, the snake light pupils. And this is a really simple pattern, but I've actually had t people tell me that it totally gives them the creeps because they feel like Voldemort's staring at them, which is good because he's creepy. He's not a good guy. Um, this is the Flaming X, which is from the charm that Hermione does in um, Order of the Phoenix when they go to the ministry and they're trying to remember which door they went through in the circular room. And she makes a Flaming X. Um, so this is the Flaming X from that. I have Monster Book of Monsters, which this is a really detailed pattern because the teeth are really tiny, but I love this pattern because it's, it's cool, but it's also a little bit creepy. You get a little bit of gums. And this is one of my few patterns that was inspired by the movie. Most of the things I draw myself, and um, but every once in a while something in the movie just really catches my eye, and, and I go from there. This is a more recent pattern. This is Aberforth's Eye in the shard of mirror that Harry has in Deathly Hallows. I found this to be a really striking visual when um, it was described in the book and I actually drew this really early on after the book came out and I didn't I didn't finish designing it or release it for a while. So that's one of my favorites. Um, let me skip ahead here because I'm getting a little long. Another of my big favorites. This is another favorite moment from Deathly Hallows for me. This is uh, Neville cutting off Nagini's head. Now this is a creepy pattern. It's got blood you see inside of the snake here, but I think that was a really strong, dramatic, and really powerful moment. And, you know, we all had the feeling in Deathly Hallows that Neville had kind of turned into a badass. And here's where you see, you know, Neville really could have been the chosen one. And I love this moment, and so I made a block out of it. Um, Hagrid's Hut, which is a big fan favorite. A lot of the, the paper piecers have told me that this is one of the first ones they want to make because they love it because it's it's Hagrid's hut. Um, nine and three quarters for platform nine and three quarters. Time Turner, which is a lot of fun. Another creepy one, Dementor. Let me get my finger off his head there. I find the Dementors to be very creepy and very accurate for anyone who's ever felt a little depressed. I've got the veil that Sirius falls through. We've got Goblet of Fire. Um, Deathly Hallows symbol. This is the first one I did after Deathly Hallows came out. And one more because I'm running really long. This is another Nagini. This is called um, Nagini Protected, which is Nagini inside of the sphere that Voldemort creates for for her. And see, that's Nagini Protected. The other Nagini I showed you is Nagini Vanquished because this is her protected. And then we've got her with her head getting chopped off. So that's her vanquished. Um, let me look really fast and see if there's any more I really want to share today. Um, this is a recent one that I, I made, and I showed a little bit of it on here. It's the Leaky Cauldron sign, which I made and dedicated to my friends at the Leaky Cauldron uh, when they had LeakyCon. Um, I worked at the Leaky Cauldron for about, I guess, a year and a half, and I have a lot of friends there, and I think that's probably going to be it now because I'm already at 10 minutes. I may have to cut something out. Um, I will see you all next week.